Okay, back. Um, I was just saying that Linux is going to be off my desktop because this is much more pleasant to use, much easier to use. Again, now I have now I'm not running off of that thumb drive, which was a brilliant idea. Whoever came up with that. I am actually running from within Haiku running on my computer. It recognizes the graphic cards, and now we're going to find out. Um, we're going to find out. We're probably going to see I'm that much I have that much confidence let's go to the welcome page now let's go to OS drawer whatever and right now I'm using DHCP you can set the network settings the exact same way you used to uh, in BEOS this is this is this is the most beautifully implemented clone I've ever seen it doesn't jump out at me as being a clone it jumps out at me as I uh, I could almost forget that I'm not in the B operating system. Now I think, no, here we go. And not on the net. I didn't have to tinker with anything, need to ping anything, nothing. Well, and again, it's because I have DCP in my router, but, you know. Um, setting up a, a static network connection isn't hard. Um, it's under preferences here, if that's the way it was. There's network. It's detecting the car and it's a gigabit adapter that's pretty impressive uh, that's the IP address that I've been assigned by the router um, I could make it static if I wanted to in fact it's even telling me what's going on I, I, that's that's absolutely beautiful now let's put haiku as my domain I think it's really gonna matter that much um, it used to be in BU, BUS, you'd make a change, it would ask you if you wanted to restart network and then networking, and then you'd go ahead and do that. I think right now that I have a little bit of a pause here with my mouse, and hopefully this isn't, <laughs> this isn't uh, a kernel bug. <laughs> God, I hope it isn't. Um, let's see what happens. You can tell up here at the top there's a bit of it's thinking a lot. It's trying to, you know, it's, it's, it's spinning its engine. Oh, getting back to the history of BEOS. Um, so what happened is Palm ended up buying out B Incorporated, the makers of the B operating system. Uh, the person that started B Incorporated was an executive at Apple Europe, and he eventually decided he wanted to make his own operating system for his own purposes and went over here. And um, started B Inc. and he first boxed B uh, B E O S uh, machines on a B E box. It's a different type of architecture than um, your regular desktop computer or Mac. And then they got out of that. That that strategy wasn't working for them, so they decided they were gonna. Uh, Port, it, port the B operating system over to uh, 386 machines like the one I have here, even though I got a Pentium 4, they're commonly called, you know, 386 machines. It's basically your, your basic, you know, Intel or PC clone, PC. And then um, they tried to sell some computers with BEOS on one half of the partition and Windows on the other half, but Windows made uh, Microsoft made some moves. I think it was mentioned in the um, Department of Justice's uh, how do they call it? Class action suit? Not class action suit. That that lawsuit where they tried to break up the monopoly. I forgot antitrust. In the antitrust suit, it was mentioned, but nothing ever came of it. Then um, what happened? is that um, they just started giving away this operating system for free, pretty much, except for the professional version version that had a port of the real player and a few other things, but not a whole heck of a lot to get anybody going. The, the application base was limited, and uh, when Palm bought out B, they decided they were just going to go ahead and turn the BEOS into a... a an operating system for for embedded devices like the Palm. 
Um, and so eventually the web page for BEOS was taken down and there were some people that missed the BEOS. They had some nostalgia for it and they wanted to go out there and um, Thursday, I keep drinking. Um, they wanted to go out there and they wanted to remake it. And uh, there was a, an initial leak of BEOS um, source code. And uh, this was the group that did not did not uh, grab it or take advantage of it. The, the group that did made what was called the Blue-Eyed Operating System at, at one point. There's another type of uh, Linux with just a haiku look to it. There's another company called Zeta that, that made uh, later releases of BUS. There was uh, one guy that, 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 apparent, that I could tell is very, very talented. And uh, in fact, uh, if you ever see this, you know, personal thank you for me for, for, for uh, keeping the BUS uh up to date because you know, the last release was in 2000. He would make something called BOS Max and he'd add a bunch of applications. He would tweak the drivers and he would add certain things. So when you're able to, um, you'd be able to still install it and use it. I guess still install it and use it today, to this day. And there's, you know, there's a compiled version of Firefox in there. 